In this particular lecture, let's learn how we could render lists or arrays in a React component. So to keep things simple, uh, let's create a new component because this component already has a lot of code. So let's not work with that. And let's also close every file which we currently have. All right, so over here inside the components, I'll create a new component. And let's say we want to kind of loop through a list of fruits or array of fruits. So here I'll say, I want a component called as fruits so fruits.jsx and over here whenever you want to create a new component what you could do is you could use one shortcut so instead of creating a component and then later exporting that component what you could do is you could simply create the component right away and export it on the same line so here i could say export default function so whenever you're writing components make it a habit of writing export default function and then the component name. So in here the component name is fruits. So I will say fruits and right away create a function and right away have the habit of returning a single div because that's what most of your components are going to look like. All right. So make it a habit of writing this code, get used to it, just learn by heart export default function and then function name. All right. So once you have this component created, it's returning absolutely nothing right now. So in here, let's create an array. So here I'll create an array of fruits. So const fruits equals, and let's have some fruits in there like apple, mango, banana, orange, and let's say pineapple. All right. So now once we have this list of fruits, one simple and direct thing which you could do is if you want to display those fruits inside that component, you could simply make use of curly brackets here inside JSX and you could say fruits here. And now once you have this, you have to simply add this components to your main app.js component. So over here inside this, I could simply go ahead and replace this hello component with fruits. And in order to keep things simple, let's get rid of this object, which we have created from the previous lecture. All right. So now if I head back here, you obviously get fruits here, but you kind of are able to see that these fruits, which are being displayed, uh, they are kind of stuck to each other and there's absolutely no space and there's absolutely no way to distinguish that uh, this is a different fruit, this is a different fruit, so on and so forth. So that means in order to display every single fruit, we actually have to go ahead and loop through every single fruit which we have up over here. Now we know how to loop through certain array items in JavaScript. So in JavaScript, what we do is we have a method called as map. So don't worry if you don't already know map because we are going to cover that now. So let's go back and let's learn some JavaScript. All right. So a map in JavaScript is nothing but it's a special function which allows you to loop through arrays in JavaScript. So let's take a simple example here. So let's say you have something uh, like a list of prices. So let me create a variable here on array here called as prices. And let's say we have some random values like 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So now if you have those values with you, and let's say if you want to loop through every single one of the values inside this, in order to loop through every single value inside this, you could make use of the map function. So you could say something like prices dot map. And what this map function does is that it will give you every single price which you have. So in order to get a single price, I simply have to type in price and this variable, whatever variable which you use here, is going to actually contain every single value which is present here. So this map is going to loop through all of those values one by one, and it's going to give you access to that single value over here. So now once we have the single value of price, let's actually print it up. So in order to print this thing up, I'll use an arrow function here. So this is essentially like a callback function. And over here, you will now get access to every single price value. So you could do anything with the price value which you want. So for example, let's say if you want to uh, kind of console log the prices, you could do that. So I could say console.log and let's say I want to log every single price which I have. All right. So now if I save this and if I run this, let's take a look at what exactly is in there in the console. 
if you take a look at the console right here the console looks quite small and but you will be able to see that we have all the values over here like uh, 10 20 30 40 50 displayed up over here so we are able to log those values here which is all right but now let's say and depending upon the price values which you have up over here instead of logging them to the console let's say you actually want to calculate a 32 percent discount on each one of those values so over here you could simply go ahead and delete this console log statement and instead now you could do something like take the price which is the same exact value which is returned over here and then multiply this value with 32 and then divide it with 100 to actually get a 32% discount. So now what this does is that it returns an entire array of discounts on all of these prices right here. So 32% of 10 would be $3.2. So 32% of this would be something different. So this function is now going to return all the discount values here. So let's save those values into another variable called as discounts. So const discounts equals this. And in order to actually view those values, I would say console.log and just display the discounts. All right, so if I save this, now this kind of gets auto refreshed for us. And let me zoom out a little bit. And now as you can see, we are actually getting the array here of discounts. So this is 32% of 10, uh, which is 3.2. This is 32% of 20, which is 6.4, so on and so forth. So in this way, you could actually go ahead and use the map function to loop through an array which we have. So what this map function does is that it loops through every single value, gives us access to that value up over here, and we could use that value in this particular function. One more thing which you could do here is that you could actually enclose this in brackets like that, in parentheses like that, and this is still going to work fine. So I hope this kind of gives you an idea about how map works in JavaScript. So now let's use the same map function in our application over here to loop through each and every fruit value which we have. So over here, what we want to do is, instead of displaying all the fruits here, I want to loop through the fruits array which I have. So over here, I will say fruits.map. And this map is going to return a callback function. And this is going to give me access to every single fruit. So let's call a single fruit as fruit here. And remember that you could name this anything, but we are naming it fruit just for the sake of understanding. And then I'll use an arrow function here. And after using the arrow function, I would simply go ahead and return the actual fruit name. So over here, let's return the fruit name in terms of a h1 tag. So I'll use an h1 tag here. So h1 opening and closing tag. And in between this, I simply want to take the value of fruit and I don't want to do any operation, but I simply want to display it up over here. So I would say fruit. And as soon as I save it, Prettier is going to format that first. Now this syntax might look a lot confusing, but you will eventually get used to it. All right. So now let's see what happens if I go back here to the browser. So if you take a look at this, as you can see, now we get all the items of fruits rendered inside an H1 tag. So now we have access to every single fruit separately. So instead of these fruits being stuck to each other, they are now kind of separated. Now a better way of representing these fruits would be to simply go ahead and kind of replace this H1 tags with, let's say, a list item tag. So let's replace this with li, which is list item. And let's enclose this entire thing into an unordered list tag. So let's create a ul tag here. Cut the closing tag and place it up over here. All right. So now if you go back here, you will be able to see that now we have a list of fruits. Now over here in the console, you'll get a warning here, which says that every child in the list should have a unique key prop. So whenever you're actually rendering lists in React, every list item should create, that should be uniquely identified by a key prop. So what exactly is that key prop here? So along with li, you have to pass in a key prop and the value for key for every fruit should be unique. Now over here, we actually use a unique ID for each fruit, 
but this time as the fruits do not have any kind of unique id let's simply use the name itself as a key so i would say fruit so now as soon as i do that that error disappears so this is how you could go ahead and render a list or render an array inside of a react component however this array which we have used here was a simple array but what if you actually have some complex array like an array of objects so in the next lecture let's go ahead and let's learn how we could render an array of objects instead of just rendering this simple array over here like that so let's learn how exactly to do that in the next lecture